do the religion. Oh, sorry. Okay, now it's time. Welcome to Religion and Religious Identities Part Two. I'm Vicki Brennan, Professor of Religion at the University of Vermont. I'll be chairing the panel. Um, right now, it looks like we only have two panelists here. So um, until the other panelists arrive, uh, we'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we'll, you'll each have 20 minutes to present, given that we have a little bit of time and flexibility on this panel. Um, I'll give you a five minute notice to start rounding up. Um, but if you take your 20 minutes, that should leave us a good amount of time for a discussion. Okay. Um, so we'll start with um, uh, Shegun Olulowo from National Open University of Nigeria. Good afternoon. Professor Sia present, fellow colleagues, and Shegun Olulowo are presenting on. The effect of technology on the development of West African church. Science and technology often complement rather than a full faith and religion. Science studies nature. The beginning focuses on spiritual, mutual supporting, as revealed by Friday, 2021. Christianity uses ICT to globally spread its message through technology. And on this wise, I want to talk on the effect of technology on the development of West African Church. I want to do a little, a little background in West African Church about this. History of West African Church. The first African Church mission was founded in Nigeria on August 14, 1891, by the Mutanai. The aim of evangelize Africa and of East African through the same government church. Named the United Native Church on September 10, 1891. It resisted foreign domination. In 1984, the native became outdated, so it was renamed First African Church Mission. Despite the European opposition to drum use, to drum use, citing Psalm 150, the church won the cause. The founder, the modern night, included E. Cole, John George, Jim Williams, T. Nessins, and the other. Statement of the problem. The integration of technology into church services presents both benefits and challenges. Despite increase in outreach due to integration of technology as experienced, especially during the COVID-19, the post-COVID-19 experience by most of these churches reveal a decline in physical attendance, particularly among the youths. Objectives of the study. The academic research aims to explore the impact of integrated technology into Christian worship. The specific objectives include analyzing the influence of technology on physical church attendance, evaluating its impact on gospel outreach and evangelism, assessing its role in church growth and development, Examining the potential negative effects of technology on integration, technology integration in church worship. The term church derives from the Greek word ecclesia, meaning an assembly of the call out ones, emphasizing teaching over two things. That's human thing. The thing, what do I define church as fellowship? It is house government and universal unit, according to Christopher 2023. Technology from the Greek word, technologos, means expertise, and logos means knowledge. 
is referenced in Genesis 1, 27, 28. Technology means applied science and technical methods. Industry, expertise of problem solving, technology transfer. Technological advancement of one transform Christianity, amplifying its outreach and influence. Churches use projectors for him to display, ICT for communication, and social media for global outreach. From our day 2019 to CBI 2020. Magnetic ICT stagnates, stagnates youth development. Africa has to adopt technology to overcome church growth barrier, according to my AC 2015. Video technology, aid technological education, according to Cole and Donet, 2015. Using digital media in worship correlates with decreasing youth attendance in Western context, according to Amakawa and Akoto, 2022. Combinating speed of ICT adoption, especially in Nigerian context. Churches now use Facebook, YouTube, for virtual services extensively. Post-pandemic experience, in post-pandemic experience, they continue the use of this platform to enhance evangelism, according to our culture in 2020. Bolu found that ICT and ICT communication to recommend better infrastructure and outreach teams, equally find ICT crucial for job growth, recommend better infrastructure literacy and dedicated outreach team. Meeting find ICT vital for job expansion. Pagua link effective ICT, evangelism to ICT, advocating initiatives targeting younger demographics in Nigeria and the UK. Methodology. Descriptive survey design. Employing quantitative descriptive method. Population of the study is, past, is pastors, leaders, and workers from first African church mission churches in Lagos. 120 copies of the questionnaire are distributed among pastors, deacons, leaders, workers, and worshippers. The theoretical framework is media ecology and the admission of innovation. Demographic information of the respondents. A total of 80 questionnaires retrieved for analysis out of 120 administrators, which represent the return rate of 67.7%. The implication of that is shows 75% respondents were males. 75% of the respondents were males and 25% female. This contrast, this contradicts or contrasts the typical church trend of more female adherents in the church. Respondent A distribution revealed that 45% are under 20, 40% between 20 to 40, only 5% between 40, 41 to 60 years, and 10% over 61 years. The implication of that is that first African church is more or less a huge church. Results are finding. 55% of the respondents agree that digital technologies like online streaming and interactive arts have enhanced overall engagement in church services. 60% believe that technology is efficient as F attract and retain new members in the church. 70% perceive that technology use in the church has increased the number of physical worshipers. Half of the respondents, that is 50%, take that live streaming of services has influenced their decision to attend physical service more frequently. Conclusion. Technology has facilitated global gospel work by enhancing communication and disseminating crucial information. 
Embracing technology is crucial for strengthening faith and advancing human endeavors. Embracing technology aligns with preparing for Christ's return by enhancing outreach and communication efforts. Recommendations from this study. Pastors should recognize technologies as a defined tool, not a conflict for spreading the gospel. Technological and Bible colleges are urged to update their curriculum to include courses that equip future leaders with essential ICT skills. Churches should collaborate in clusters to share resources and finance necessary ICT infrastructure collectively. Uh, we found out that most of the churches in the urban are able to actively engage in the use of new ICT, while most of the churches in the rural, uh, they, they don't have what it takes to be able to find out that. And uh, so to be able to do that, this study is recommending that uh, each organization, should, uh, the organization of the church should set up a kind of clusters that will help us build finance over time so that the churches in the rural areas can now get resources from that. Even if it means they will not pay back the installment and if they have access to ICT resources. Pastors should identify skilled members to form a committee that will train and train the conclusion in the ICT skills. Thank you for your time. Let's do it. You will also touch the time in a wonderful fashion. You, you, you even had extra time. So thank you so much for your presentation. Are there any panelists who joined us online? OK. OK. So um, we'll move to uh, Laulu Oluwasami's presentation. And I do want to thank you for coming. I know it might have been difficult for you to get here this evening. You emailed me, but I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you getting here. So uh, <laughs> can you bring up this PowerPoint? Okay. Oluwasami, please. Uh, yeah, I won't start the timer until. All right. Yeah. But you can. Okay, I won't start the timer. Oh. <laughs> I know. I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. I also appreciate everybody for participating. Yeah, it's not understandable. It's not understandable. Doing that with those of All right. So, um, my topic is a religion, religion and Nigerian public institution. The study of charities uh, role in Bobby's uh, visa arrival. And um, visa arrival is a series, a comedy series. I'm telling you on the YouTube. Uh, so that let me make that uh, clarity. Another clarity I want to make before I start is the fact that I'm not a religious person. I'm not a religious scholar. And so I'm looking at my uh, concept of what I want to discuss from the point of view of the. Um, let them set your let them set your PowerPoint. Yeah. That's yeah. Your okay. PowerPoint. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Now. All right. So I'm looking at it from the point of view of political science and public uh, administration. So like I said once again, my topic is religion and uh, public and a uh, public institution, study of charities law in the uh, COVID uh, visa on arrival. All right, so uh, my introduction, next slide please. Public institution worldwide provide essential services to meet the need of people. Uh, and this is done in the name of regarding the public welfare and creating universal system to address uh, social needs. Uh, but the public provision of these uh, services enhances uh, the government ability to respond directly to local needs and support most uh, the most uh, disadvantaged. Disadvantaged, and the services are expected to be delivered within a framework of work ethics, as emphasized by theorists like uh, Max Weber in his uh, bureaucratic uh, theory. For Weber, he advocated as we tell for institutions where rational, social, and economic objectives are pursued with greatest possible efficiency. And so he was the first scholar to systematically describe the characteristics of uh, bureaucracy and its role in the industrial society of Western Europe. So this theory, or the theory of bureaucracy, was designed to minimize the frustration 
and irrationality of large organizations where relationships between management and workers were traditionally based on class privilege. So Weaver's ideas, Weaver's idea standard for running an organization is what he termed rational leader bureaucracy. And that's, he formed that in 1947. So when we have bureaucracy approach um, the impersonality of public of office, uh, discourage addressing issue with emotional attachment and sentiment. And this principle ensures equal treatment of both organizational, uh, organizational members and the public, avoiding pre preferential treatment for any particular group of, of clients. Next slide, please. So this is in line with religious tenets, and it's very religious and conscious. And I put up uh, some uh, scriptures from both Taiwan. I was uh, trying to look for if a verse or any other artificial traditional religion verse that talk about the work at this but I because my work is still, uh, still in progress, so I, I I will incorporate that in the process of uh, of time. So like I said, it's in line with religious tenets for equity, which emphasizes law, justice, me and mercy. In most of the religion, religions in Nigeria, especially Christianity, as you can see on the, um, the slide, we have Matthew 23 plus 23, uh, where Jesus was rebuking the Pharisee for being there, uh, being to have harsh on people. And he said that instead of being asked to be demanding for tithes, if you love, embrace law, which is justice, mercy, and faith. When you look at the verse that I put in the Quran, that is Quran uh, 16, verse 19, say, surely. Allah enjoying justice, kindness, and the doing of good to all kids and king, and forbid all that is shameful, evil, and oppressive. And these are the things that you see uh, in some of the public institutions in the media today. All right, so uh, let me move on. Let's like this. So, Legion has historically played a significant role in shaping the fabric of human society, particularly in influencing human interaction in public space, uh, spaces cultural norms, ethical principles, and political uh, structures. Legion is, as an adjective factor, form the basis of human conduct and work ethics in public uh, landscape. Next slide. So a study uh, conducted by India et al. Um, in 2020 highlights the importance, important connection between religion and identity, work behavior, and organization, organizational uh, outcome for them. Religion belief can uh, profoundly affect how employees do their job, as uh, nearly 80% of, of the workforce are religiously affiliated in the United States, and 68% um, are uh, religiously affiliated in England and, and Wales. So, in society where religion has positively shaped public conduct, it has served as a cornerstone of societal uh, structure, and it has it has also provided a moral compass, fostering community cohesion and influencing governance. According to uh, Woodring 2020, Asian societies are often integrated into religious belief, into their daily life, with ritual practices shaping social norms and individual behavior. Next slide. So the, the, this foundation, uh, this foundation formed the basis for human interaction. However, as a uh, review said, TP 2023 notes the progression from theocratic government into civilization to secularism and to pluralistic uh, landscape of modernity led to transformation due to advancement in globalization and digitality. Uh, so this complicated the role of religion in influencing moral conduct, especially in the public space, uh, such that various aspects of contemporary life take new dimension. And religion become an instrument of irrationality and indoctrination promoting preferential treatment or simply put nepotism in public and space. Uh, okay, my statement of a uh, problem. Are you on the next slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so this complexity is evident in Nigeria, which is at the first, one of the most religious countries in the world. And Nigeria has been on global ranking across the ages. Uh, I think you should go to the next slide. Um, okay, so this is the... Okay, so okay, so Nigeria has been on the global ranking, the global religious ranking across ages. For instance, in 2015, Nigeria was ranked ninth out of 40. 
40 most dangerous countries in the world. And just recently in 2024, the year is ranked 22nd among the 148 countries but with 96% of, of, of its population expressing religious faith. Next slide. So that's why the high level of religious, there is a disconnect between religious inclination and public conduct. As many individuals who profess a strong religious belief are found flouting ethical and standard and work efficiency in public offices. And this is depicted in charities role in the Bobby's um, um, visa on arrival. Now, when you look at in the, in my slide, you have um, public officials wearing clean and um, yeah. And the one that, that doesn't have a job is known to be uh, a popular Christian, one of the popular uh, churches, like one of the popular in Nigeria. All right, next slide, let's go. So they have all formed the major concern of this paper. Hey, the study seek to interrogate, I'm talking about the objective now, or the first question. So the, the study seek to interrogate religious perception on what ethics in public space find, to find out the correlation between identified perception and work ethics in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria as a public institution, and using a uh, charity through in Bobby's uh, visa on arrival. And the last one is to examine the implication of religious practice of work ethics and efficiency in public and institution in Nigeria. Uh, for my theoretical framework, next time, I use the uh, structural functionalism and bureaucratic uh, theory. Uh, for structural uh, functionalism, it sees every element of society as interdependent and Interdependent and this interdependency impose structure on behavior of institution and their and, and their members and that's where religion can come in because religion also has a play because it's one of the subsystem in the society. Then I also use a bureaucratic theory and provided by mass people, and uh, which also emphasizes the fact that organization needs to be run on certain uh, ethics ethical standards that have highlighted them earlier. Ah, uh, then my methodology. I, I, I plan to use a systematic review of, of the existing literature and then, then select some videos from the uh, series I, I mentioned in the that will be some arrival. Uh, and this is in line with the approach adopted by Elliot and so, as I've said earlier. And uh, in their study, the title of their study is Religious, Religious Identity Workplace, a systematic review, research agenda and practical education. Then in doing this, all relevant empirical evidence on the intersection of religion, work ethics, uh, and public institution will be appraised and collated in order to provide a complete interpretation of, re of research results on the religion, religious perception and work ethics in pu public place, and the implication of religious practice on work ethics and efficiency in public institutions in India. And I'm still going to, I'm going to uh, derive tips from the, uh, the series I, I chose to analyze, uh, analyze this. Like I said, it's still a work in progress, but Expectedly, it's supposed uh, this, this study will contribute to knowledge in the following way. Number one is the fact that deeply the understanding of our religious perception of work ethics influences uh, um, behavior in professional setting, uh, particularly in the gear. And it's going to uh, also offer empirical evidence on the relationship between religious perception and work ethics, filling the existing gap in literature, in general public uh, institution. And finally, it's going to inform uh, policymakers on the role of religion in shaping work ethics. Um, Potentially guiding the development of policy that will start a more inclusive and ethical work environment in India. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Um, well, we have plenty of time for discussion. Um, as the chair, I actually want to just take, use my chair prerogative to. There's a couple comments I wanted to make on your um, your presentation. Uh, first is that. Is, is you were looking for an Ifa uh, verse about work, but why not use the poem? Okay. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not it's right. It's okay. I mean, do you know the what I mean, right? Yeah. I mean that to me exemplifies the your about work. Right? Right? And I know it's not necessarily like I know you want to use Ifa because then it's parallel to the Bible or to the Quran, but Yoruba tradition is more you know diffuse than that. So I just think that might help. Then I just want to tell a story. Uh when I applied for my visa to travel to Nigeria this time, 
in the US, you send it, you go to the consulate, they collect your biometric, then you leave an envelope for them to mail your visa back to you. When my visa arrived, I, you know, my passport, I opened it up and inside was a Bible tract. Wow. That some embassy worker had stuck inside my passport to, so I, I think it gets to your point about the way that religion and work are in shaping each other, even in, you know, they're working in New York, they're working, you know, outside of Nigeria, and yet they're still having to put their religion into their work, so. I just wanted to share that story. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, are there any questions or comments or reactions to the two panelists? Okay, great. So we'll take a couple of questions and then we'll, so in the back and then the front. Yes. And please say who you are and then your question. Okay. My name is Esther. I'm going to And the center, I just want to comment on the center she signed. I just want to, I just want to make a comment that the of uh, technology in uh, promoting evangelism or to facilitate uh, the facilitating the development of uh, churches in general now cannot be by size. I want to use myself as an example. I recently moved to Abuja. I was living in Ibado. And I have to leave my church secretary. So when I moved, I was like, okay, I want to design. I put everything. He said, no. Uh, social media has made it easier. You can still continue with your work, even while you're in Abuja. And uh, for the past month, I've been doing that through the use of the uh, social media. We have Zoom meetings, join them. And uh, even the meetings, I disseminate the information to the our WhatsApp group. And since I've been to Abuja, I've not joined any church. I'm still a member of my church, even in Ibadan. You know? So I, your work is timely. And I just want to add to it that uh, truly, um, technology has really transformed the sphere of uh, evangelism, maybe a aspect of uh, development in the uh, churches. So it looks like one of our panelists has been pointing us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. But uh, so I think um, we'll revert back to the presentation and then we'll come to your comment. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Mudashiru, are you ready to are you ready to talk? Yes. How so much for Hello. Hello, you can hear, yes. Good yeah, good afternoon. I'm glad to be part of this panel. And I'm happy to be a, a, a participant in this ongoing LSE 2024 conference. My paper is tied to intra conflict contestation and religious peace building in a West African city. The focus of the paper is on Ibadan, Ibadan Muslim, uh, Muslim community. Like in most African society, religion remains a significant fabric of everyday life. And uh, this, logic, this is logically the view expressed by one of the foremost African scholar, Johnny B.T. The Africans are notoriously religious back in the 80s. And up to today, it is a fact that African express their religion in various ways. Specifically, it is such that uh, it is expressed as accommodating and they adapt religious culture and practices to, to, to their societal settings, with few exceptions of religious crisis here and there as witnessed in many other communities. The, uh, this focus, this, uh, the, the work focus on Muslim society. And uh, within the Muslim society, most of them, they claim that the, the 
religion is one, such that they claim to be one Uma, one community, and that have been the notion in various quarters. But a, a, a closer look also depicts that, that, the, society, that the woman may not be one. In other words, there are cases of intra-religious differences, constellation conflicts, that most often arise from fragmentation over denomination ideology for determinism, which is common. In Nigeria, for instance, religious reform is not a new phenomenon, but it appears today to be such of a, a radical approach, especially in the northern Nigeria, where most scholars examine religious crisis over the years. People have looked like the my Tassani riot of 1980 in Kano, Izala versus Tijaniya Brotherhood in Gombe, among many other studies. But hardly do you notice that the Southwest Nigeria is often neglected, neglect, uh, is often not, people are not paying attention to this society, such that people always focus on the northern Nigeria. So in this study, um, examining the co complex interaction of religion, everyday peace, and development in Nigeria with a reference to religious contention and non-violent approach that was adopted in the battle, Central Mosque issue. Of course, the Islam came to a battle through the Malian network. That is where most of them, they, uh, they call it as a money because it came through the Malian, the trader, the caravan from the northern part of Nigeria. So and one of the major significant of Islam is the beauty of mosque. Whenever you go and you see a mosque, it shows the presence of Islam in that community. The first central mosque in Ibadan was built around 1938. Around 1930, the first mosque. And that was the only mosque where you can perform the Friday prayer. Among Muslims, you have two types of prayer. The daily prayer you go to five times in a day. And the Friday prayer that you move which of course is now all mosques cannot, you cannot observe Friday prayer in one mosque. So there are certain mosques that are set aside for Friday prayer. So as at that time, the only mosque that was recognized, that was built around 1930, is the one located at Ojaoba, near the King's Palace and near the King's Market Square. So the Muslim clerics have a cordial relationship with the Ibadan elite, the Ibadan warrior, and the traditional council. So it means if you are in Ibadan at that, that period, when it is Friday, you have to go to Ojaoba and observe your Friday prayer. So people come from near, from nearby villages. But that is the only, those who accept Islam at that time, you have to walk for my, many miles for you before you can join the Friday prayer. So over time, the religion keep on expanding and people keep on accepting the religion because most of the elites, the warlord, the traditional are part of the religion, are keep on accepting the religion because the clerics, as at that period, offer a lot of spiritual symbolism, a lot of spiritual commodity for them to solve their existential problem. And to even at times when going to war, some of the clerics provide amulets 
So these encourage them and motivate many of them to accept the religion. However, because people, because you have to move from the village for the interior to the town on Friday, because you are a Muslim and because you want to uh, observe this Friday prayer. So at some point around 1950, uh, the many some of the young Muslim actors who were trained outside the uh, Yoruba community, some went far Zaria, Kaduna, Ilori to learn religion, to learn Arabic, to learn Quran, and many other religion uh, to acquire many to acquire advanced religion knowledge. So. Some of them, when they return, they discover that they need to move beyond that having one mosque. And that is like you are you are you are making people to suffer because they have to move many kilometers before they can join congregation for Friday prayer. So there was argument that there is need for us to allow construction of many other mosques so that people, since the religion keep on expanding in number, people keep on asserting the religion. So as need for us to expand and allow the construction of many other mosques. So it became an issue. Within the elite, since they didn't understand the Arabic, it was only the Muslim clerics that understand the Arabic. The Friday summer, which they call Hutuba. And uh, so is the summer is being recited in Arabic. Some of them believe that they must not recite more than one Hutuba in the battle. That it become ab an ab abomination to allow them to permit other uh, 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 clerics to recite another Utuba. That it's going to affect the growing pace of the, that it's it going to affect them, that it could create calamity. So one of the young clerics who came from Zaria precisely to learn and acquire enough uh, knowledge decided to confront the Muslim community. And for him, he said there's nothing wrong in having more mosques. So far, uh, it is the same Islam. So this struggle was led by one Sheikh Utman Nanose in 1954 who had just returned from Zaria, Northern Nigeria. It was at this, at this instance that he was gathering, was gathering people. And within short period, he has, got, he has gained momentum. And he openly confronted the elders at the central mosque that it is not the best that they need to uh, accept and allow many other mosques to be established in the city. So that was the bottom line. Sorry, you this, have five uh, questions. You have five more minutes, please. All right, thank you. Thank you. So for him, he said elsewhere, they have more mosques. But the only issue is the regulation that they need to regulate the, uh, how such mosques emerge. So this study therefore examined the intra-religious constitution and fragmentation within the Muslim community and how Islam flow of idea to religious management. 
was strategically deployed to promote non-violence and social cohesion in the city to contrast reformist violent jihad. In this study, I argue that attaining sustainable peace develop sustainable peace building and development require contrast and synergy between global actor, religious actors and the community leaders as important agents of change, as the legitimacy and knowledge contribute to our religious condition in the Badam Central Mosque was resolved. So this study was an ethnographic study and with data from archives in the Badam archives, National Archives in the Badam. The study will build on religious and non-religious on religion and religious actor growing in significant and contribution to non-violent approach to peace building and peacemaking in African society. The study will provide counterpoint narrative to the perspective that religion has largely inspired non-violence and intolerance. So it will build on ongoing debate that will of, it will build on ongoing debate on the role of religious tradition to secular non-violent parties and peace building in African society. More so, the study will shed light on the creativity and adaptation of local knowledge parties and Islamic tradition to conflict resolution in modern society. Perhaps the outcome of this religious challenge and reform, and reform eventually led to the building of many mosques. So, after a lot of us trading between the ulama, the Muslim community, Sheikh uh, Uthman Aladose was allowed. I mean, at the end of the day, he succeeded in building a uh, mosque at, the, at his uh, family compound at Arimo. And the, the mosque became the first central mosque outside the Ibadan Central Mosque. And this Central Mosque remained there till today. After a lot of crisis, the, the Ibadan Muslim community eventually allowed, after a lot of us trading discussion and uh, fragmentation within the community, the letter so it was later resolved amicably to non-violent approach, to non-violent approach, which eventually led to construction of many other mosques. Till today, the chief imam of Ibadan cannot even count the number of central mosques in Ibadan. Two more minutes. One of the has come of the. All right, thank you. One of the signal out of the 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 issue is the. Establishment of many central mosques today. However, before you can establish or construct a central mosque, which is key, the chief imam of Ibadan must be notified. He will give his authority, and he is the one that will give the staff of office to the imam of that particular mosque. So, in a way, this study argued that in southwest Nigeria, Actually, among the Muslim ulama, there are crises, but they have a way of resolving this crisis that it will not lead to violence as being claimed elsewhere in African society or in, even in Nigeria, like people are aware. Uh, the, the violent approach of the Boko Haram and many other, many other ones in the northern Nigeria. So in southwest Nigeria, they, are, they have issues but they have a, a way of uh, resolving the issue. So, which led to the establishment of many mosques in the Badan today. Thanks you for listening. So we have no more panelists. There's no more panelists. Exactly. Okay, so we'll return to the Q&A. Um, so, in the front, and then inside, yeah. Okay. I have um, one on like two. Oh, and a, and a comment on one. I think it's still like a journalist. I want to start from what I say. 
Maybe because I can give it the I was saying I was so um, attentive to what he's saying, but I just want to contribute that when you talk about the central, I know because I cover the events of science. They have a large number of central homes in the Badalun. I want to just give us an estimated um, number of people and add to your project. Um, then for the first speaker, Christianity is um, is something that you cannot really uh, say you want to talk much about or you want to talk less about. And when it comes to going social media, um, like myself, I do most of my work on social media, talking about targeting the gospel and all of that. So it's not something you can just um, the way we try it's on. It's something you still really need um, to work on. Then you talked about um, your questionnaire that you did one twenty, right? And you got eight. That's the fast. Because I know of a lot of people that do questionnaires and they don't get feedback that much. I think which what we did is enough for you to do more of your work. Then for the second speaker, um, okay, you were you were trying to analyze um, charities role on visa on arrival. That happened to be one of my uh, favorite comments. I, I love this much to them, especially all the tasks there. They are they are one of uh, <laughs> talent. And you, you didn't give us the the audio voice of charity. Then you didn't let us know so that we have a feel of what you're really talking about. Because I know so many people have not listened to so arrival here. Yeah. They don't watch so I think oh, yeah. it's something that you can have to Let's know about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a question for the first two speakers. So for the first speaker, I I think you're quite as well alive, but I would be very interested to know in what way the move towards social media is actually changing the experience of people. And I wondered whether you have some evidence of that. I think there's some just general agreement that, you know, obviously there's more and more Christian content available through the media. So there are many debates about what that changes for people. And I think that would be very, very interesting if you have information uh, on that. And for the second speaker, I just have a question because I didn't quite understand it. So. Let me just refrain or tell you what I have understood. And if I have misunderstood it, just correct me. So you're looking at the television series, but you're using an anthropological, like where the designer of the television series invents how they, or like they may say design, like they plan how they represent society. But then you're using structural functionalism, which is an anthropological theory designed to explore actual life society. So I understand that, but doesn't, I mean, the fact that it's a television series, doesn't that mean that it's not, this is how the designers of the series are presenting it. So that was mine. Maybe I have misunderstood you. So, right. so um, we have this um, to the first speaker. Mutala Ibrahim has published excellent articles on how technology has changed religion, religious practice, practice in Abuja, in case you're not familiar with his work. So that's for the second speaker. Exactly. Mutala Ibrahim. Thank you, Jansi. Okay. Do you, the panelists want to respond? Yes. I want to say that social media is really, really important, especially for us men. We are waiting for the issue of COVID 19. People have been using social media, they have been. But it really done or not with the I mean, event of COVID 19. Um, many churches that are not poor that are not biased to the use of integration of social media, they are. Uh, they have a lot of regret in a way, but that regret is in a way being um, being solved by the majority of the other Christians. So we don't have much loss. For example, in the family, 
to have a lot of people that go to different jobs. If, it, if there is a job that I have not got into, should you be there? The reason should be there. They may not be able to reach out to their member at that time. But the good news is that there is a job in that whole company that have that access. So yeah, to, to us as a Christian, it's no loss. People are able to live. It's only, it only means they have a pastor and a new pastor at the time. So a lot of people have been preserved during COVID-19 with the event of integration of social media. And during that time also, we also noticed there are some of the churches, especially that could not, that didn't, that have not embraced into that. A lot of them, some of them have not even thought there are a few churches that were put there during that time. Because they are going to meet their financial substitution. So in Lagos, there, there isn't so much money, not just such churches are on renting. And so if for that period of time, they are unable to generate any income, no definition of that. And the good news is that there's also a network from churches. Some churches were paid out, some churches were asked, some but not all at the time. But it's really a bad thing. So the, the COVID-19 was an island. And that was one of the reasons for this study. Even though we know it takes a lot for us to be able to raise this facility, um, which most churches in the rural area may not be able to afford. That's why we are advocating that there should be a network. There should be a cluster that people can build and they can get in some of the money back to buy the division, and through that several of the rural churches have been here. A lot of rural churches are now integrated into technology something. Yeah. yeah. They are very fun. I don't know whether I've answered the question. It wasn't really even a question. I think it's important to ask. If I mentioned the answer, you have all the money, right? Okay, thank you. It's all right, um, thank you for the answer to questions. Okay. okay, so can I move to exactly? So, do you want to go first before I ask my question? Yeah. Thank you. Should respond. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for the uh, I don't know if it's the question or observation, but let me just get out Actually, I was using a movie set, this one, and I was a framework for analysis because what is depicted in that particular uh, series is a kind of picture of what is happening to society. And the character I chose not the only best in that we have so different characters. Like, I wish I could just like she said, I will just show you the one. I, I so, but it's it. just a depiction of what the public institution or public offices uh, uh, look like. So, and what uh, the structural functionalism is actually seen is that society is just like a big system that has some sort of system of which religion is the and this series of system influence uh, one another. Like religion is placed influencing politics, politics influence the vocation. Okay,
So, yeah. <laughs> so I to and you say first time you say interpret religion in our role as a official thank you. So, um, did you have questions? And then, yes, question. Yeah. Oh, so I just, just want to find out if you consider the social economic status of um, church members who perhaps need to subscribe for data in order for them to join all of the program that is because it's very key. Uh, well, I would look at as I said, we are not going to be agreed to ourselves. Most of these church members, if they are not, they don't have to give power to use it for any, they use it for any other thing outside. And to watch a service of two hours, you will not spend 300 dollars like that. Really? If it's, it's, if, not. if it's not, if you are doing your thing, Okay. If you are doing not you will not spend up to three of you. Yeah. But the truth is that most of these church members, some of them, they stay on social media, they do any other thing, they spend a lot of money. So if we are going to be, I mean, drinking sentiment now, some of them will be having as an excuse. It's made of the sentiment anyway. So if you consider their social status, they could explain reason why. They spend hours on social media, listening to something else rather than joining uh church service and you know, you have to consider that as well. <laughs> so and that could tell us more about why they decide on what they do with their data and what they do not do. That is. I think what you're saying is it's a true that's a graphic question. Yeah, sure. That's another real story. I cannot enjoy your um your your, your topic. I'm sorry, I can miss your presentation. But I think it's a brilliant work actually about the world. Do you want to begin to see how the several uh properties of society interpellate with each other? And how do you think that interpellation begins to help you think about the idea of, or the concept of different politics within other space or within the intersection of religion and whatever you have? Okay. Yes, uh, like I said, my work is important. I know in the process there will be some other things that will be very interesting. Yes. Okay, so the suggestion of uh, the shell of share that yeah, I, 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 I still believe it's a poem. It was written by uh, an author, uh, J.F. Odunjo. Yeah, so it's, okay, yeah. So it's, it's more, it's not within the religion uh, context. So it was just a poem to give a didactic, it's more of a didactic value, to give a social didactic value. To, to but can I just say, I have seen youth fellowships recite that poem yeah. at church events very frequently. Yes. So to say that it's 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 religion, but it's not religion. I think your about religion is very complicated. I think it is that it's expressing a, a sort of deep sentiment, uh, a deep ethical sentiment of your bodies more general. So that's why I'm suggesting it. And there could be elements of that also in the past. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm I'm not. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm glad the school is not updated to any picture. Yes, of course. Yeah. But I will also think about see uh, that particular example, or maybe it's not related to what she's saying. Maybe I can also add another one. Yeah, okay, yeah it's another one. It's a NU, NU, to FA. So, FA, so, 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 Running away from being beaten by rain, it's running away from being beaten by sun. We yeah, are better than we are. We'll be beaten by poverty. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Um, let me ask uh, uh, online. Do you have any responses to the the questions or the comments about your work? Let me allow you to respond. Is he there? Can you hear us? Yeah, of course he's on. Yeah. Dr. Mdashir. Hello. Is there? It's me. It's not. Yes. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, I think the only question is uh, from the mother there. She said the number of us in the battle. Well, as a, during my field work, as at now, there is no specific record of the number of central mosques in the battle. But what is very important, and Jamil, the chief imam is the only one authorized that will give consent and authority before they can establish Friday mosque. We have as many as possible because the city keep on expanding. And the way and manner in which the city keep on expanding, uh, they are yet to have re accurate record. But I'm sure it's over 1,000 as of today. There is, it should be over 1,000 central mosque in the city of Ibadan. But they don't have specific record about the number. But I know for sure that it is over 1,000. But the chief imam is the consenting authority. He must give consent. But the first prayer, he must be there physically. And before he gives consent, there must be negotiation. They must have seen him and probably pass through the ritual. A lot of ritual in the sense that he gives approval recommendation from people. And he always, he always ensure that there are distance, there are distance whereby when you have a one central mosque, there must be distance before you have another one. So that there won't be more, that will be population of unnecessary population of mosque. Because central mosque, in the central mosque, the congregation must be this particular number, at least about 15, people should be involved before you can say you want to have five day prayer. You said 15 Muslims. So before you can, you can give approval that go ahead and establish a, a central mosque. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I think uh, this has been an excellent conversation, uh, good dialogue, and I learned a lot. So, uh, but we'll round up early. It's been a long conference, and I'm sure we're all happy for an extra half hour of time to relax a bit before dinner. So thank you to the panelists. Thank you. And thank you to the lot of you. Thank you all day.